Chapter 41 And it came to pass, at the end of two full years, that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river, and behold, there came up out of the river seven kine, well-favored and fat-fleshed, and they fed in the reed-grass. And behold, seven other kine came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean-fleshed, and stood by the other kine upon the brink of the river. And the ill-favored and lean-fleshed kine did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kine. So Pharaoh awoke, and he slept and dreamed a second time. And behold, seven ears of grain came up upon one stalk, rank and good. And behold, seven ears, thin and blasted with the east wind, sprung up after them. And the thin ears swallowed up the seven rank and full ears. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt, and all the wise men thereof, and Pharaoh told them his dream. But there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Pharaoh was wroth with his servants, and put me in ward in the house of the captain of the guard, me and the chief baker. And we dreamed a dream in one night, I and he. We dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there was with us there a young man, a Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard, and we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man according to his dream he did interpret. And it came to pass, as he interpreted to us, so it was. Me he restored unto mine office, and him he hanged. Then Pharaoh sent, and called Joseph. And they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and he shaved himself, and changed his raiment, and came in unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee, that when thou hearest a dream, thou canst interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And Pharaoh spake unto Joseph, In my dream, behold, I stood upon the brink of the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven kine, fat-fleshed and well-favored, and they fed in the reed-grass. And behold, seven other kine came up after them, poor and very ill-favored and lean-fleshed, such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for badness. And the lean and ill-favored kine did eat up the first seven fat kine. And when they had eaten them up, it could not be known that they had eaten them, but they were still ill-favored, as at the beginning. So I awoke. And I saw in my dream, and behold, seven ears came up upon one stalk, full and good. And behold, seven ears withered, thin, and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them. And the thin ears swallowed up the seven good ears. And I told it unto the magicians, but there was none that could declare it to me. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. What God is about to do he hath declared unto Pharaoh. The seven good kine are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one and the seven lean and ill-favored kine that came up after them are seven years, and also the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind. They shall be seven years of famine. That is the thing which I spake unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do he hath showed unto Pharaoh. 
Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt, and there shall arise after them seven years of famine, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land, and the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine which followeth, for it shall be very grievous. And for that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh. It is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now therefore let Pharaoh look out a man, discreet and wise, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint overseers over the land, and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years, and let them gather all the food of these good years that come, and lay up grain under the hand of Pharaoh for food in the cities, and let them keep it. And the food shall be for a store to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Forasmuch as God hath showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his signet ring from his hand, and put it upon Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, Bow the knee! And he set him over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or his foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name zephanath paneah and he gave him to wife Asenath, the daughter of Potipharah, priest of On. And Joseph went out over the land of Egypt. And Joseph was thirty years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh, and went throughout all the land of Egypt. And in the seven plenteous years the earth brought forth by handfuls, and he gathered up all the food of the seven years which were in the land of Egypt, and laid up the food in the cities, the food of the field which was round about every city laid he up in the same. And Joseph laid up grain as the sand of the sea, very much until he left off numbering, for it was without number. And unto Joseph were born two sons before the year of famine came, whom Asenath, the daughter of Potipharah, priest of On, bare unto him. And Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for said he, God hath made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And the name of the second called he Ephraim, for God hath made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. And the seven years of plenty that was in the land of Egypt came to an end, and the seven years of famine began to come, according as Joseph had said, and there was famine in all lands, but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. And when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, Go unto Joseph, what he saith to you, do. 
and the famine was over all the face of the earth, and Joseph opened all the storehouses, and sold unto the Egyptians, and the famine was sore in the land of Egypt, and all countries came into Egypt to Joseph to buy grain, because the famine was sore in all the earth. End of chapter 41 Chapter 42 now Jacob saw that there was grain in Egypt. And Jacob said unto his sons, Why do ye look one upon another? And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt. Get you down thither, and buy for us from thence, that we may live and not die. And Joseph's ten brethren went down to buy grain from Egypt. But Benjamin, Joseph's brother, Jacob sent not with his brethren, for he said, Lest peradventure harm befall him. And the sons of Israel came to buy among those that came, for the famine was in the land of Canaan. And Joseph was the governor over the land. He it was that sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brethren came, and bowed down themselves to him, with their faces to the earth. And Joseph saw his brethren, and he knew them, but made himself strange unto them, and spake roughly with them. And he said unto them, Whence come ye? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. And Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew not him. And Joseph remembered the dreams which he dreamed of them, and said unto them, Ye are spies, to see the nakedness of the land ye are come. And they said unto him, Nay, my lord, but to buy food are thy servants come. We are all one man's sons, we are true men, thy servants are no spies. And he said unto them, Nay, but to see the nakedness of the land ye are come. And they said, We thy servants are twelve brethren, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And behold, the youngest is this day with our father, and one is not. And Joseph said unto them, That is it that I spake unto you, saying, Ye are spies. Hereby ye shall be proved by the life of Pharaoh, ye shall not go forth hence, except your youngest brother come hither. Send one of you, and let him fetch your brother, and ye shall be bound, that your words may be proved, whether there be truth in you, or else by the life of Pharaoh surely ye are spies. And he put them all together into ward three days. And Joseph said unto them the third day, This do and live, for I fear God. If ye be true men, let one of your brethren be bound in your prison house, but go ye, carry grain for the famine of your houses, and bring your youngest brother unto me. So shall your words be verified, and ye shall not die. And they did so. And they said one to another, We are verily guilty concerning our brother, in that we saw the distress of his soul when he besought us, and we would not hear. Therefore is this distress come upon us. And Reuben answered them, saying, Spake I not unto you, saying, Do not sin against the child, and ye would not hear? Therefore also, behold, his blood is required. And they knew not that Joseph understood them, for there was an interpreter between them. And he turned himself about from them, and wept. And he returned to them, and spake to them, and took Simeon from among them, and bound him before their eyes. Then Joseph commanded to fill their vessels with grain, and to restore every man's money into his sack, and to give them provision for the way. And thus was it done unto them. And they laded their asses with their grain, and departed thence. And as one of them opened his sack, 
to give his ass provender in the lodging-place, he espied his money, and behold it was in the mouth of his sack. And he said unto his brethren, My money is restored, and lo, it is even in my sack. And their heart failed them, and they turned trembling one to another, saying, What is this that God hath done unto us? And they came unto Jacob their father, unto the land of Canaan, and told him all that had befallen them, saying, The man, the lord of the land, spake roughly with us, and took us for spies of the country. And we said unto him, We are true men, we are no spies. We are twelve brethren, sons of our father. One is not, and the youngest is this day with our father in the land of Canaan. And the man, the lord of the land, said unto us, Hereby shall I know that ye are true men. Leave one of your brethren with me, and take grain for the famine of your houses, and go your way, and bring your youngest brother unto me. Then shall I know that ye are no spies, but that ye are true men. So will I deliver you your brother, and ye shall traffic in the land. And it came to pass, as they emptied their sacks, that, behold, every man's bundle of money was in his sack. And when they and their father saw their bundles of money, they were afraid. And Jacob their father said unto them, me have ye bereaved of my children. Joseph is not, and Simeon is not, and ye will take Benjamin away. All these things are against me. And Reuben spake unto his father, saying, Slay my two sons, if I bring him not to thee. Deliver him into my hand, and I will bring him to thee again. And he said, my son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead, and he only is left. If harm befall him by the way in which ye go, then will ye bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to Sheol. End of chapter 42